All right, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a few minutes about uh, guarana or guarana, uh, which is a, a plant that grows in the uh, Amazon. We primarily uh, import ours from Brazil, and so um, this is a little introductory video to the short three-minute video about the uh, evils of uh, uh, guarana that I did a, a few uh, weeks ago that I'm just getting around to getting published. So. I had a question here, and this is kind of where both these little videos came from, is, uh, you know, how come I can buy uh, guarana for, you know, $3 a pound from Black Hole Foods, and um, yours costs, uh, I think we sell ours for, you know, that's a good question, what we even sell ours for. You know that, you know that you've got a serious business when um, you no longer even know your pricing. Uh, so let's see here. So we sell our guarana for um, forty dollars for seventeen ounces, which is well, it's a what is that about uh, forty seventeen divided uh, same times? Well, it's you know about thirty eight dollars a pound, something like that, and it may have to go up because uh, uh, guarana has increased by three hundred percent the raw materials over the past uh, few months. And I've yet to get a clear answer as to why that is, um, and it, it is as it is. So we'll keep our prices the same as long as uh, we can, as long as we have back stock of uh, reserve product. Hopefully we can um, uh, get access to uh, uh, cheaper raw materials so we don't have to boost the price. But anyway, so back to what's the difference between $38 a pound and $3 a pound guarana. And here's the difference. Um, our guarana is uh, cold process, which means it's ground at a, a slow speed, whereas most guaranas are, um, are they're distilled or rendered, which means they're boiled in a vat for sometimes months. And when you boil a uh, guarana, what happens is you end up uh, denaturing all the the uh, minerals and nutrients. In other words, fusing together. You can think of like if you take uh, cane sugar. Uh, white table sugar and throw it in a pan, a saute pan, and caramelize it. You actually change the material. It goes from a, you know, white li uh, white solid to a uh, liquid, uh, a black and brown and black uh, fluid. It's called caramelization, and that uh, caramelized sugar is intensely hard to digest because you've in in essence fused together, or you've um, reduce the space like you know it, uh, most uh, molecular or most compounds the molecular space you know is just say the space seems like this and when you heat it you you sort of fuse it together so that means uh, the minerals and nutrients are still there in some form it's just uh, you know your body may um, try to assimilate them uh, or it may recognize them as the nutrient they are and when it tries to assimilate them they're basically the wrong size I mean that's a, a very simplified uh, so ours is cold processed, which means it's adaptogenic. Adaptogenic means that you can um, uh, take small quantities. I mean, if you take, you know, uh, three or four tablespoons of uh, any type of adaptogen, whether it's uh, chocolate or guarana, yerba mate, mahuang, rhodiola, whatever, you're going to be up all night. Small quantities, though, like uh, the way I test uh, guarana is to take a teaspoon to a tablespoon before bed, and if I can sleep, it's an adaptogen. And adaptogens are uh, foods which, the way they work is they uh, they interact with the serotonin and the the uh, the uh, ambient light cycle that's going on outside. So as the sun goes up, it becomes lighter and lighter, and your serotonin system registers that uh, the uh, the level of luminous um, ambient light. And so as as light is increasing, that tells your body to you know increasing, and it's at its zenith. That tells your body that you're in activity mode. And I look way back in the background. You can see the poodle is jumping. Um, Mia, come here. Come here. Uh, so as the sun goes up uh, and hits its zenith, which is the high point, uh, your body is in activity mode. So that means you're, you're bringing your energy systems. When you first wake up, you sort of reboot your energy systems. You move... Um, or you've got two modes, you activity mode and regeneration mode. And so in the morning, you're moving from regeneration mode into activity mode. And then as the sun begins to set, 
leaves zenith and starts going down and becomes dark you know here's the the you think of the horizon when the sun drops below the horizon then you're supposed to drop into regeneration mode which is where you uh, do uh, long-term housekeeping like cellular regeneration all the longevity functions um, building neurotransmitters building uh, hormones the majority of the hormone and neurotransmitter material uh, also where you um, do memory consolidation where you convert what what's occurred to you during the day the information you've imbibed or ingested and also the experiences you've had and you turn those into patterns so that you no longer have to step out in your yard and think well you know what's that thing sticking up out of the ground you know that's a tree because you've seen it so many times that you, that's embedded into a, ser a serotonin held pattern you can think of sort of serotonin uh, as being similar to the bits on your hard disk. As you arrange the bits on your hard disk, you don't have to write your files over and over. When you boot your computer, your files are all there. And that uh, that's kind of the way your serotonin system works. Very important. Uh, so um, adaptogens basically, um, as, you're, as the sun goes up and you're moving into activity mode, adaptogens tend to support energy levels coming up and then as the sun drops past zenith down towards the horizon and and um, goes dark then adaptogens will also support deep sleep so that's why you can tell if you've got a true adaptogen because you know uh, if you drink a little um, like I usually drink a few ounces of chocolate bliss uh, maybe an hour before I go to sleep and it deepens my sleep uh, so um, that's adaptogens let's see what's next oh yeah next is purity so our our guarana is 100% pure guarana. There's no added uh, chemicals, colors, or sugars. Um, and you can check the the uh, follow-on video that I'll tack on the end of this uh, talks about what we found. Um, and uh, after that video was recorded, we found some even um, uh, higher levels of um, uh, sugar and uh, uh, coloring that are added to uh, different uh, uh, guarana products. Also just uh, to wrap this video up there's a, a term that you'll notice on um, a lot of chocolate products that are that's called cacao um, or cocoa solids and what that means is they've take, taken this burnt guarana, not the kind we have, but the burnt uh, methamphetamine like guarana because when you burn guarana you basically turn it into methamphetamines. That's why people uh, you know like it because it's um, you know makes coffee look like a toy. Uh, and so cocoa or cacao solids, uh, what that means is that um, da down in South America they've taken uh, cacao and they burnt it multiple times usually and then they mix in with it uh, guarana so that they bump up the the uh, caffeine level so it's more stimulating uh, so that's uh, that's uh, what cocoa solids are uh, if you decode that what it means really is it's uh, uh, low-grade uh, chocolate powder uh, mixed in with um, uh, low-grade or uh, burnt uh, guarana so now on to the next video, which was uh, the, the evils of Guarana, which is um, what we found when we were uh, interacting with some uh, large vendors looking for uh, pricing on uh, Guarana. All right, here's something funny you ought to know about uh, Guarana or Guarana. Um, the Guarana that we sell is, um, it's cold processed, which means that it's uh, processed at a, um, a lot colder temperature than the typical Brazilian method of uh, rendering guarana for um, months and months boiling it down into a substance that's more like methamphetamines than an adaptogen food. Here's another thing that uh, uh, another way a lot of companies denature uh, guarana powder um, and we found this out uh, because we're always checking sources and uh, asking for quotes on different products and asking what's in them. So you, so you find out all sorts of in interesting things. So uh, it turns out that a lot of the guarana that's being sold in this country, uh, not so much in uh, South America because they like their guarana straight up. They like uh, like the buzz. Uh, here, though, uh, we're very uh, we're uh, tend to be a very sugar centric uh, type of um, country and also uh, like things to look and taste the same and so color seems to be important to us more so, so than uh, Asian and uh, South American cultures. so 
Uh, turns out that one of the common practices of guarana in this country is to add in maltodextrin and caramel coloring, which I was unaware of. So, um, uh, like uh, one of the uh, quotes, um, this is how you find out what's in stuff. You ask for a pallet pricing quote from a company. In other words, uh, how much for a pallet of guarana powder from your company? And then uh, get a um, uh, what's called a cut sheet on the actual product to see what's in it. So um, this one company, which is a fairly large distributor of Grana that a lot of people buy th from this company and the repackage, they they break down their Grana as having 10% of the physical product is maltodextrin, sugar, no joke, I just kid you not. And one half percent of the product is caramel coloring. So this gets two benefits. One, it, it levels out the taste for people. And it um, also, if you dump in a bunch of caramel color, it looks the same all the time. Because Guarana, um, I mean, every single batch looks very, very different. Because uh, different growing conditions, slightly different processing, ambient temperatures. It's just every, every batch looks different. So, you know, think twice before you go down to your local... Uh, black Hole Foods and, um, you know, pick up some guarana off the shelf um, because uh, just because it says it's 100% guarana, like this company, like if you look on their website, it says 100% guarana, except if you get a cut sheet, it's 10% maltodextrin and 1.5% caramel coloring. So buyer beware, caveat emptor.